Since the beginning of time, human beings have searched for ways to maintain health and vibrancy and to ward off disease. As we approach a new millennium, many people are finding themselves drawn back to ancient healing traditions. I feel that the feet are the foundation of life and they take us everywhere. Looking at the foot, it gives a map of the whole body. So reflexology, for me, uh, is an extremely short, quick route to that relaxation response. It was also relaxing my whole body. I felt so comfortable, and I slept like a baby. Many people are now discovering that the solution has always been right under their feet. The beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii, world-renowned for its healing and restorative qualities, is the location for our journey into the timeless art of reflexology. In this program, we'll explore how a centuries-old healing tradition is being used today to balance and harmonize our bodies, to reduce stress and create physical well-being. Anyone at all is, is capable of doing this, and the nice part about reflexology is it feels so good. I have a girlfriend of mine that I sent her to my foot reflexologist. She told her she was pregnant before she even knew. One day I came in with horrible menstrual cramps, and she started working, and all of a sudden it was as if floodgates opened up. And I said, were you just, you know, and she said, yeah. That's where I was. She said, this is just too amazing. It's a very, very good way to stay in tune with your body, to know what problems you might be having that need to be looked at, and also to relieve in, uh, a lot of stress and tension and uh, uh, just make you feel better generally. I feel much better. If you'd seen me six months ago, you would know the, you could see the difference. In fact, the first day when she touched various places on my feet, one place I said, oh, that hurts. And she said, that's your thyroid. And of course, I have thyroid disease, so I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. It helped me where nothing else did. And I was very aggressive in trying to find things that would work, uh, and very persistent. And this is finally the thing, I, I believe, that really um, turned me around. And I am continuing to have reflexology, and will, it will always be a part of my life. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In a lifetime, the average person walks to the moon and back. Where would we be without our feet? We run, jump, saunter, stroll, tiptoe, sprint, and shuffle. We march, bounce, hike, hop, leap, and tread ever so softly. We don't go anywhere without our feet. We can set off on the wrong foot, step on each other's toes, put our foot in our mouth, get our foot in the door, put our feet up, walk in someone's footsteps, put our foot down, get our feet wet, have one foot in the grave and still land on our feet, all the while remaining footloose and fancy free. We can do all this and yet how often do we truly acknowledge our feet? They play an enormous role in our health and well-being. Our feet contain 52 bones. That's over one quarter of the bones in our body. In a typical day, each of us takes 7,000 steps, which adds up to about seven miles a day. And those 7,000 steps shouldn't be taken lightly. Every step we take subjects each foot to about 130% of our entire body weight. In one day, our feet lift and carry a total of at least 10 cars of coal. Maybe we should put our feet up more often, or maybe we should just thank them. Thank you, feet. Since 1973, Anne Galanders has performed and taught reflexology. She's a best-selling author, internationally recognized teacher, and authority on reflexology, and founder and principal of the British School of Reflexology. When we used to walk the earth on rough ground, we were in communication with the earth every day of our life, 
And the more we walked on rough stones and twigs and so on, we received this stimulation through our feet, which helped us to keep in good health. I love to be barefoot. And there is, there's definitely a, a this is, the earth is my, my mother. And, and when I walk on the earth, I'm walking on my mother's body. The foot was not designed to walk on a hard, unyielding surface. The foot, feet were designed to walk on conforming surfaces so that every time your foot would hit the ground, something would come up and fill in. That is, the ground would come and fill in all the concavities on the bottom of the foot. Like if you're walking in sand or, or earth, you're getting stimulation to the various areas of the bottom of the foot, which you don't get when you're encased in shoes. Nowadays, going barefoot is not always an option. However, reflexology provides even more stimulating and thorough health benefits. So what is reflexology? Reflexology is a science that deals with the principle that there are reflexes in the feet that connect to each and every organ, gland, function and part of the human body. It works on the nervous system, on the central nervous system, which as you know is the brain and spinal cord. It has a profound effect on that area which, from which stress emanates. So with the relief of stress, which is the main benefit of reflexology, it doesn't just mean feeling better mentally about yourself. It means that when the body is de-stressed, every single function of it improves dramatically. Reflexology is known as an typical form of therapy. No one culture can claim to have discovered it. Since the beginning of time, people around the world have believed that touching specific points on the feet replenishes the entire body. One of the earliest graphic documentations of reflexology can be found in Saqqara, Egypt, in the tomb of Anka Mork, also known as the Physician's Tomb. This pictograph, dating back to 2330 BC, is believed to depict an actual reflexology treatment in progress. The Egyptians perceived the human body as a symphony of vibrations, the internal organs making up an intricate orchestra. They maintained that these organs could be tuned or played by manipulating points on the feet. Evidence of reflexology's existence can also be traced back over 5,000 years to India, as well as China and Japan. The placement of these sacred symbols on the Hindu god Lord Vishnu's feet correspond to many major reflexology points. It appears that the ancient Hindus believed that the macrocosm of the entire human body is contained within the microcosm of the feet. In Buddhist tradition, Buddha's feet, or footprint, is oftentimes used to represent his entire being. This may be another allusion to the fact that the entire body is carried within the soles of our feet. The earliest known documentation of Chinese reflexology dates back to the 4th century BC, when it was practiced in conjunction with acupuncture by a doctor named Wang Wei. There was a Chinese doctor who found that if he applied pressure just to the feet with his um, thumbs, with the needles in position, tremendous energy was released and healing took place. It wasn't until the beginning of the 20th century that zone therapy, an earlier form of reflexology, was introduced to the United States. Dr. William Fitzgerald, who was an ear, ear, nose and throat surgeon, discovered that if he applied clamps to the tips of your fingers, and you used to use little like metal clothes pegs, and then you put elasticated bands around the middle section of the fingers, you could create an anesthetic effect up the arm, shoulder, into the throat, face and head. Zone therapy is based upon the theory that the body is divided into 10 equal and vertical zones. Applying pressure to one area of a zone could affect all the organs and systems within that same zone. Pressure was often applied to the hands and the feet. At that time, remember, anesthetics were so dangerous, chloroform masks and so on, and more people died from the effects of the chloroform than the problem they had. And he used to do minor surgical intervention teeth removal, tonsillectomies, throat surgery, facial surgery, by just this pressure to relieve pain. And in his book, Zone Therapy, he said, when the nerves of the hands and the feet are clearly understood, there will be a tremendous breakthrough in the field of healing. There has been speculation that Fitzgerald learned zone therapy from Native Americans. A 
For thousands of years, many tribes have employed various forms of footwork to treat pain, diagnose illness, and balance the body. Or Fitzgerald may have learned of zone therapy in Europe, since it was practiced hundreds of years earlier by working classes of Middle Europe, as well as by those who provided health care to its royalty. Dr. Joseph Shelby Riley, a physician during Fitzgerald's time, did not subscribe to the popular medical belief that zone therapy was mere quackery. Riley became an ardent practitioner of zone therapy, further developing Fitzgerald's techniques. During that time, a woman named Eunice Ingham was working as a physiotherapist in Riley's office. It is Ingham who had a truly profound impact on Western reflexology. Before this time, the majority of the focus had been on applying pressure to the hands. Ingham believed that the feet, being more sensitive, could create greater results. And she produced the charts, the Ingham, Ingham charts, and discovered that when there was a problem in the physical body, you could match up a painful spot in the foot. And she found it was so accurate. The person had a bad hip, and you apply pressure on the outside, you get this reaction. Ingham also discovered that pressing certain points did not simply anesthetize pain, but could actually stimulate healing. Dwight Byers, Eunice Ingham's nephew, was one of the first people she tested her methods on. Today, he carries on her work as head of the International Institute of Reflexology. During the early 1970s, Anne Galander studied with Dwight Byers in England. Today, she is one of the world's foremost authorities and teachers of reflexology. Guidelines. Relaxation techniques. In order to make it easier if you under, to understand reflexology and to make it easier to give a treatment session, it's important to understand the guidelines of the feet which identify and isolate specific parts of the physical body. The guidelines are divided into four major and one minor part. I'm going to show you on the feet how we isolate and identify these special areas. To start with, we have the first major guideline of the foot, which is the diaphragm line, and that's identified by observing the darker color tinge of the skin above that line to the flesh below. And at that level, we draw our guideline across. That's the diaphragm line. It also represents the base of the lung, and is a very good area to work in any case when you are trying to relax the lung function. The next major guideline is the waistline, and that's determined by running your index finger along the outside edge of the foot until you find this little bony protrusion called the fifth metatarsal notch. Now, if you're a long-waisted person, this bone will be lower. If you're a short-waisted person, it will be higher. It just goes to show how very individual everybody's feet is. And we then draw our guideline of the waistline across that level there. The next guideline is the pelvic line, and it's found by feeling both your ankle bones and drawing the line together and running a line across the very base of the heel. That is called the pelvic line. The next guideline is the ligament line, the plantar ligament line. And if you retract your big toe and run your thumb down, you can feel this very tight, taut, elastic-like sensation and on that line we draw our dotted line to identify the ligament line. The fifth minor guideline is the shoulder line and that's identified by coming just a half an inch below the toe areas and drawing your dotted line across this space. All the reflex points in the body are found above or below or on the inside or outside of those major guidelines. Before you commence giving a treatment to your friends or loved ones, make sure that they're in a very relaxed reclining position. As we see here, this is the ideal situation to give a treatment. It's very good and essential to apply a little light talcum powder to your hands and the soles of the feet of the person you're about to make contact with to make your job much easier. I'm going to teach you now some nice relaxation exercises to get you used to handling people's feet. And the first one we call relaxation exercise, side to side. And we, by cradling the two hands, either side of the feet, we give a nice moving effect. And if you're doing it right, your foot should flap from side to side. 
Do exactly the same technique to the left foot. And it will loosen up the stiff foot and make it much easier to start working upon. The second relaxation technique we're going to use is the diaphragm relaxation. And we're going to put our thumb just below the toe bones, as we see here, and we're going to pull the pressure of the toes over onto our thumb. We're contacting the base of the lung here, and the benefit of this is that it does slow down the respiratory rate and put the body into a nice, fine, sleeping mode. So don't be surprised if your patient very quickly nods off to sleep. <clears throat> so we work from the inside to the outside of the foot and then return. The next exercise is called metatarsal kneading and making a fist from the sole of the foot and placing our hands on the upper part. We push in and retract back. It's very much like kneading bread. It's a very special one, a favorite metatarsal kneading. Then we're going to do a nice exercise to loosen up stiff ankles. This is really good for elderly people who perhaps have arthritic constriction. And it helps improve the mobility of their feet. So placing the thumb joints in front of the ankle bones, we will rock the foot from side to side. And that's called ankle loosening. We're now going to do a rotation of the foot, so placing our left hand underneath the right heel, like we're showing you here. We're going to turn the foot in a nice oval direction. And that's called the undergrip. And then we're going to place the hand over the top of the instep, and that's called the overgrip rotation. We repeat exactly the same techniques to the left foot as we do the right. The next exercise is called the foot molding and sandwiching the foot between the, two, the palms of both our hands, we do a nice movement across the foot. This frees all the bones of the toes. It's a nice relaxing exercise for the upper part of the foot. Foot molding. And last but not least, we work across the rib cage, making pressure contact from the sole of the foot. We creep nicely around the fronts of the feet with all the four fingers joined together of both our hands. And that's called rib cage relaxation. And that's a conclusion of all the relaxation techniques which you can use to start your treatment. Use some in the middle and some at the end as a, as a final aid to healing the body through the feet. The body is comprised of 10 major systems and they can all be found on the soles of the feet. The respiratory system. The respiratory system comprises two lungs and a trachea, which is the airway that brings oxygen into our lungs. Our lungs are cone-shaped and lie in the upper thoracic cavity, the right one being larger than the left. Each lung is filled with millions of alveoli, which are small air sacs, which control the exchange of gases. The exchange of gases means bringing in of oxygen and elimination of carbon dioxide. The most common complaints that we can associate with respiratory problems are bronchitis, asthma and emphysema. Bronchitis is said to be the Western disease subjected to there being so much intense pollution in our environment today. So when we look at the feet, we can go on to looking at the lung area on the right foot and we would find this by working on the upper section of the foot and we work the lung area by holding the toes back and away from us and nicely working up these spaces between each of our toes. So we work from the very base underneath the metatarsals to the joint of the toes to the foot. This is the area that is responsible for the whole of the lung on the right side. Asthma is very prevalent in children today 
a lot again to do with pollution and children seem to respond admirably to reflexology. Maybe it's because their vitality is a little higher than ours as we get much older, but they certainly seem to have good results within a very few months. And many children have been able to become off their Ventolin and their nebulizers, or at least reduce them to a much lesser degree. We can also find a contact point for the lung area on the front part of the foot. It is the area just below the metatarsal bones. And we work this by applying pressure from the sole of the foot and working down between these grooves with our index finger. So this is the lung area on, and the breast area on the front part of our foot. Just as organs and functions overlap in the physical body, so therefore do reflex points in the feet. So the breast area is actually is on the upper part of this point and the lung just beneath. If we go over onto the left foot now, we're going to be contacting the areas to the left lung and we're going to work exactly the same procedure from the base of the metatarsal joint up between the area of the toes using our left thumb this time and supporting our foot and holding it out as I'm showing you here. Again from the base to the top, the base to the top and returning and changing to our right thumb and going back over the same reflex points to give extra stimulation, extra work. Most people get a good reaction to an improvement in their asthma within about six treatment sessions. Again, we can contact the front part of the lung and breast area by making a fist and working down the grooves between each toe. Just go down about one inch and that will cover that whole entire area of the lung and the breast on the front part of the foot. Coming back from the lateral side, working down between the grooves until we get, we get back to the beginning of the treatment on that left foot. This therefore is the whole area that we would work on for helping respiratory infections of the lower areas of the lung. Presidential reflexology. Following an assassination attempt, President Garfield, America's 20th president, suffered from extreme long-term pain when all other remedies failed, he was able to alleviate his pain through intensive foot massage. The circulatory system. The heart is a muscular pump which deals with the propulsion of oxygenated blood through our entire body. And without oxygen reaching every single cell, we would very quickly die. The heart's a great center of emotions and feelings. We talk about heartfelt good feelings to our friends. We have a broken heart. We are cold-hearted, we are hard-hearted. And the solar plexus is an area just below our lung, which is on the left foot, which is an identifying area to how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our lives. So the heart is on the left side of the body and it starts its beating life on the 16th day of your conception and can continue through till you're 100 years of age. There is really no other pump in living memory that could ever fulfill that amazing feat of achievement. So when we look at the foot, we're looking on the left foot because the heart is on the left-hand side of your body and the sorts of illnesses we're going to be able to relieve and improve are angina. It's excellent for those just suffering from a heart attack the remedial principles of it give them great benefit, relax them, make them feel better about themselves. It's also good for hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and low blood pressure. So most of the illnesses subjected to propulsion, which is propulsion of blood through the body, will benefit with reflexology treatments. In order to work out the heart area, we're going to work out the area of the first three toes on the left foot, beginning with the big toe and ending with the third. So it's just this circumference area around here. 
and the solar plexus lies just below that left foot, which again is a great barometer to your, to your feelings. So to work that out, we're going to hold the foot in the way I'm showing you here, using your left thumb, we're going to work across the area with straight lines, reaching out just to the third toe. One and two, covering the whole surface area. Hardening of the arteries or arteriosclerosis, which is a very popular westernized disease today, can be relieved and hopefully prevent further problems occurring. So it's well advisable for people who have had a heart attack to have very regular reflexology treatments for the rest of their life. If only conducted over a monthly session, it will certainly be of benefit and again, help them possibly not to get into trouble with their blood pressure and their angina attacks again. We come back from the lateral side to the medial side, covering that whole surface area. If you've just recently had a heart attack or are suffering from corrosion of the arteries, you're likely to feel quite a lot of sensitivity in this section of the foot. But persevere with this, and if you can help your husband or friends or family on a daily basis just following a heart attack, their recuperative state and the convalescent stage of their illness will be greatly enhanced. The lymphatic system Your lymphatic system is a system of immunity and throughout the main prime areas of the body, which is the neck, the armpits, the breast, the intestines and the groins, we have small nodes called lymph nodes. These little nodes contain lymphatic fluid, which is still a part of your circulatory system. And rather than being propelled by, by the pumping of the heart, it's propelled by movement, by gravity. So as we walk, we distribute lymph fluid throughout our physical body. The main area of the, of the production of the immune system of the white blood cells is on the spleen, which is found on the left side of the body and therefore is on your left foot. The spleen produces millions of white blood cells by the hour. It is our defense mechanism. And when we're very stressed and very strained, the first area to be defective is the immune system which is why a lot of people who've been suffering from all sorts of anxiety states, depression, maybe bereavement, tend to have a low immune system and frequently succumb to some very unpleasant illness when their partner or friend has died or when they've nursed someone through a very serious illness. Now the lymphatic glands are worked primarily over the main parts of the feet, so we're going to work at the very bases of the big toe, which will contain the lymph nodes in your neck. So if you had tonsillitis, your lymph nodes would swell in an attempt to prevent the infection arising and going further into your brain, whereby you could succumb to the unpleasant illness called meningitis. The second area of lymphatic drainage and lymphatic support is in the breast area, and it's on the front side of the foot, and it's all the lymph nodes in the breast spaces. So it's found and contained within the first five toes. And to work that, we work exactly as we did when we directed our pressure on the lung area. We work down in between these little grooves of the feet and we're contacting the lymph nodes in the breast area here. The fifth one is just out there. Again, the lymphatic glands in the spleen will be found on the left foot because your spleen lies on the left hand side of your body. It's often a very sensitive area if you've recently had a severe infection. But to help the immune system and get it to work more efficiently, we can work out this area from the lateral side, working right out to the side of the foot. Continue with the pressure from your thumb, just working on this outward direction. It actually is in line with the fourth and fifth toes. So we have a few scattered lymph nodes in the liver, which is just along the area here. 